I'm Alex Hayden, and this is Sonoma Raceway. Qualifying today presents a different situation than most other events on the schedule. Not only do we have group time sessions instead of single laps, but the better you qualify, typically the better you finish at these road courses, as track position is key. Let's see who has the hot hand on the road course. The 2022 Cup schedule brings back the shoot layout, and we'll see how these drivers handle that today. It may help some of the veterans who are a lot more comfortable and confident with the shoot. Let's get set for today's qualifying session, twisting and turning here in wine country. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of NASCAR 22 on the channel. And today we have the race at Sonoma. Race 16, that means we have just 11 races to go on the season, leading into, of course, the finale here, uh, which is going to come up sooner than what we think at Daytona. Coming into today's race, we have a 50-point cushion over second place in the standings. We have a new driver in second place in the standings. That driver would be Martin Truex Jr. William Byron now down to third, and even Byron, only seven points behind him, now has Christopher Bell. So it looks like the top four are all within 70 points of each other, but only 15 points separate second through fourth. And we'll see if Kevin Harvick is going to have a chance to try to uh, find his way not only to victory lane for back-to-back -back races, but extend his points lead once again. Expert difficulty is on. We're about to go qualifying at Sonoma. Uh, group qualifying is what it will be. And we're going to start things off uh, hopefully strong here. And I'm going to go with a loose... Looser setup here to start. Just kind of guessing on the setup. I did not practice either, so I have no clue exactly how the shoot is going to go. I have no clue it's, if it's going to actually throw my car out there or not either. We'll have to find that out. Uh, nope, uh, but it is giving me a rolling start though, so that is different from most other tracks. Alright, so got to get into the top 12. Because I believe this is the 2021 qualifying layout. Uh, man, they made Sonoma look a lot different in this. It looks like the graphics have been enhanced at Sonoma from what it was on the NASCAR 21 side of things. Am I wrong? It looks way more realistic. Should have a pretty interesting race though at Sonoma today. Going to have two laps in this first session, and then we'll go from there. A little contact between Harvick and Bowman. This is just the warm-up lap right now for Harvick. His first timed lap won't be until he gets to the start-finish line, so that contact with the 48 didn't really hold him up any. Derek Booth, Corey Freed, RBLX, uh, Joshua Rumsey, Mark DeMars, Davion West, Matthew Dorda Bruno, and others. Welcome into the stream. Yeah, sorry for the delay. I had a... Um, had forgot I got everything ready to go and then I forgot I was like oh shoot I didn't even tally the points from <laughs> last night uh, of course uh, this is the fourth consecutive day we have ran NASCAR 22 on the channel it'll be the last time for about a week we'll go back to NASCAR 06 for the rest of the week and of course Thursday we have our throwback Thursday stream as well so this is the first lap that counts here for Kevin Harvick got to get into the top 12 to advance into round two car feels like it's got grip right now Should just try to push hard regardless of where the 48s... Well, that's what I get for doing that. I should have known they were going to check up. And if I had to guess any spot on the racetrack for the field to check up at Sonoma, you would have to think it'd be the shoot because that is what is new from the NASCAR 21 side of thing to NASCAR 22. So I have to be expecting that on restarts especially today. Should be a big enough gap that Harvick maybe won't have to worry about catching Bowman on this next lap. Gonna hope that this next lap will be the clean one for Kevin Harvick. It'll be his last one as he power slides up off of turn number 11 and back into the kink onto the main straightaway. Uh, 
Uh, Gillen coming out of the pits, but Harvick going to be able to easily get around him as he's getting up to speed. Bowman goes off into the sand there just a little bit. The dead grass, I guess. So he went a little bit wide in the S's. Should say the carousel. He's got a pretty good lap going. I would have to think Bowman's got decent speed. Bowman definitely power sliding his way into the hairpin. The first of two right-handed hairpins on the racetrack. Now they go into the S's. Harvick hitting his marks. He's going to have to go for it all. And to turn 10 and 11. A little too hard in turn 10. And he's going to go wide. That's going to cost him a lot of time on his qualifying lap. Bowman coming into the pits. It's going to give a big opening into 11. But he couldn't charge the corner as hard as what he would have liked. And back to the start-finish line. I don't think Kevin Harvick's going to have a great lap by any means. 17.187. And we'll see where he qualified for today's race. And we did make it into round two. All right. Well, um, round two is made for Harvick, even with that mistake in turn 10. Only two tenths of a second off of A.J. Allmendinger, who was fastest in the first round. William Byron uh, actually tied for the quickest time with Allmendinger. But Harvick only three tenths of a second off. Is the AI super slow here? Is that what it is? I mean, I'm on expert difficulty. And I made a big mistake in turn 10, and I still was third. All right, well, we get one more shot at it. We're going to use all 10 minutes in this second session, trying to get the poll time. Harvick, one of the first out of the pits. Hopefully he doesn't have any traffic in front of him this time around. He's going to try to go for the pull. I don't know if Kevin Harvick has qualified on the pole this season or not. I can't remember. I, You know what? Now I'm thinking about it. I think we did on a short track or two. If I had to guess. Hopefully the cars are going to be faster in the race and maybe it's just the qualifying times are down. I didn't feel like I was really that much faster than Alex Bowman, for instance. Who was in front of me the entirety of my pretty much three laps if you count the get up to speed lap. Hi, Bush fan. Thanks for tuning in. This is the first timed lap of session two for Kevin Harvick. Should be able to get about five or six laps in in this session. I would like to think he's going to have a faster lap even on this first lap than what he had in each of his two laps in the last session. Although he does go a bit wide that time in that first hairpin in turn seven, uh, turn six rather. Are sliding around a lot on the curbing. Have to use it though. I mean, you don't have to, but better if you do. That was a perfect corner. Saw the new playoff pack. 
What, with NASCAR 22, or... Is that what the update was? So I honestly have no clue. A 1 minute 16.155 second lap time. And Harvick had a little bit of a hiccup on that last lap at turn 6. So he's going to really try to get through that corner a bit better this time around. He's got a good lap going for himself. A lot better in this corner that time around. into fifth gear pushing really really hard in turn 10 this is going to be a great lap yeah I didn't really look into detail what the patch was exactly four that last lap was actually two tenths of a second slower than the lap before that which i'm quite surprised harvick digging that time into the carousel surprised he got the car to blow up as quickly as he did really pushing as hard as he can right now might as well he's already got a quick lap really two quick laps but the first one was quicker it's going to be harder though as these tires start to fall off to run a lap time that's going to be anywhere really better than that 16.155. Be lucky to get into the 115s. That'd be a blistering fast lap around Sonoma, but I guess it's not impossible. Probably the best he's got through turn 10 in both sessions of qualifying. Wow, 115.766. Harvick picked up a ton that lap. That's a ridiculously fast lap. I'd like to say that that's going to be pull time, unless a lot of these guys picked up from session one to session two instead of just Kevin Harvick. Got to be sure not to burn his tires off, though, like he did at Coda in that final stage. Harvick did score 19 stage points in that race. Got a stage win in stage two, second in stage one. He's going to have a much better starting spot, though, here than what he did at Coda. Qualified outside the top 20 at Coda. Even quicker, 115.620. Picked up another tenth and a half. Coming in hot into the carousel. Slipping and sliding his way through there. That wasn't perfect by any means, but... I don't know if I can go faster than that. I mean, I've put together probably three ridiculously fast laps so far. The two of them in the 115. I had a 115.7 and now a 115.6. Picked up a tenth of a second from the previous fastest lap of the round. The session expires once you hit the start finish line after the clock stops. Once you get to the start finish line before the clock stops, that lap does count. So it's going to be very close on if this next lap is going to be the final lap for Harvick or not. I think he's going to have two more. Should have two more laps. Yeah, he'll easily have two more because he's not even to the two-minute mark yet. So two laps for Kevin Harvick, which I believe would make it a seven-lap session.
115.7 again. A lot of that was the carousel just not getting through there as good the last, really last two laps now. I don't even know what was better, that lap or the lap before. Yeah, this lap isn't going so well. I mean, you're in qualifying, you push the tires to the max. Not trying to save for anything. Start the tires these guys are going to be starting the race on. Well, the stream itself is kind of a train wreck because the game crashed at one point in time midway through the race. But as far as like how we ran, we won a stage, uh, finished 13th in the 600. Wasn't too terrible. We actually had a really good shot to win, but we had a caution in the middle of green flag pit stops in the final 10 laps. We would have cycled through. We probably would have gotten to the lead and won the race, but we didn't cycle through, so we ended up getting trapped a lap down and ended up finishing 13th. I guess, I mean, technically we finished on the lead lap and got all 400 laps in because we were ahead of Bell at the finish, but we were a lap down, though, on the restart. Yeah, 116.321 that last lap, which is still really fast, but it was about seven tenths of a second slower. This lap so far really good. This is the final lap for Harvick, barely keeping it on the track there. Really pushing hard. Maybe a little too hard. <laughs> Going really wide into the chute. Brad Keselowski might be in Harvick's way. What? Hey, that's not fair. That was a great lap I had going. Why'd it cut me off? The time ran out and it just didn't let me finish the lap. That's stupid. It's supposed to let you finish the lap. Once you get to the scoring loop. Yeah, screw it. We're on the pole, 115.620. That lap might have been quicker. I felt like I was pacing really well. Notice the dip going into one, told you about that weeks ago when I was at Charlotte. Yeah, I did notice that. Um, It wasn't as bad as NASCAR 21, because that dip was there on the NASCAR 21 side of things too, and I thought it was worse on that end than what it was on NASCAR 22, but it was definitely noticeable. It was really hard to get my car to turn to the bottom of the track at turn one, especially on old tires. All right, so Kevin Harvick on the pole. William Byron will start second. Martin Truex Jr. third and Christopher Bell fourth. So the top four in points will start one through four. And jo Justin Haley fifth. Reese Hesmans qualifies sixth. Brad Keselowski seventh. Kyle Busch eighth. A.J. Allmendinger, who was fastest in round one, uh, ends up qualifying ninth. And then Alex Bowman rounds out the top ten. We were 1.3 seconds faster than William Byron. This is expert difficulty, so I can't up it anymore. Um... Hopefully they're faster in the race, otherwise this is going to be a long race. Might have a lot of cautions though, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it all plays itself out. Kenneth Clark, thanks for tuning in also, by the way. I'm Alex Hayden, deep in wine country to bring you all the action from this venerable road course. Sonoma has been a staple in NASCAR since 1989, and we have 40 hungry drivers looking to put their name in the race winner column. We're going to see them running the shoot layout again this year, so let's see how they handle it. is going to get it done on the road course today. Let's head trackside and get the engines fired for today's race. Alrighty, so we already went through the starting lineup for today's race, so now all we have to do is start the race itself. Kevin Harvick trying to go for mix points day on back-to-back -back days. And we'll see how the field will approach this one. No race is a gimme, especially in this game, but if Harvick can start off strong, it's going to be his race to lose here early on. 
Green flag is going to be in the air. Harvick will lead the field down into turn one. William Byron trying to get a good start. And it seemed like he did. Having the advantage going into the carousel. Christopher Bell slides right in front of Kevin Harvick. Harvick has to go into the grass to miss him. We stay green. The whole field ended up stacking up behind him. We have a caution now in the carousel in the opening lap. William Byron's going to lead the first few laps under caution. But uh, Kevin Harvick intentionally going wide there to try to miss the spinning Christopher Bell. And definitely a wild start. Harvick going to have the outside this time. Green flag back in the air. And this might help him going into the carousel now. Potentially get back to the lead. Might be a race of restarts. Hesmans quickly up to third. Harvick going a bit wide again. William Byron setting the pace here in the early going. See if Harvick can catch him into the shoe. This is where the AI was pretty slow in qualifying. And there's the checkup by Byron. That's going to allow Harvick to get by him on the outside. Byron going to try the top now as Harvick protects the bottom. And Harvick will hold clear off the exit of turn number seven. And heading into the S as they go. First stage is 25 laps. We ran six of which under caution already with that lap one accident in the carousel when Christopher Bell had spun. Kevin Harvick will lead the first green flag lap. Byron in second, trying to get back into second place in points, coming off an abysmal 28th place finish at Gateway last night, which has costed him second in points now. He was leading in the standings just two races ago and quickly is now... 55 points out of first by Kevin Harvick. Picked a bad day to have a bad day knowing Harvick won both stages in the race yesterday at Gateway. Harvick qualifying well, obviously on the pole today at Sonoma, looking to take control. Just needs to make sure he takes care of those tires. Shouldn't have to pit in stage one, but we'll see. You never know, I guess. Iron lost a little bit of front grip, it looked like. Almost ended up in the wall. Went very wide off the exit of turn 11. Second road course race of the season. Still have a few more until the playoffs after this. Road America, Watkins Glen, and Indianapolis. And at least with qualifying, I was able to go about seven to eight laps on those tires. So I know about what it's going to handle, like at least that far into the run. But anything beyond that... We'll just have to wait and see exactly how the car will handle it. Definitely when I was pushing extremely hard, trying to set the fastest lap I possibly could to qualify on the pole, it was pretty tough to hang on to, but I don't plan on trying to run that fast of a lap in the race, to be completely honest. Maybe if I have to push very late in the going, that's one thing, but in the early going, Leading, slowly pulling away. I'm not too worried about it. The last lap we ran was a 116.5. The 115.6 was the pull lap. And that was a 115.5. So that was quicker than the pull time for Kevin Harvick. It didn't even feel like I ran that quick. Maybe we don't have to push extremely hard <laughs> to run fast. Maybe I just have to dial it back a little bit. Maybe I was pushing a bit too hard and... Not getting as much out of the car. Only that was the third or fourth lap on green flag tires, though. His pole lap was on his fifth or sixth lap, so that might have been uh, some of the reason why that lap was a bit quicker than the pole time. 
be qualifying, but Harvick definitely set sail right now. Dreaming of the white Christmas. Yeah, I'm definitely going to end up having a white Christmas this year. It's not supposed to snow on Christmas Day necessarily, but it's going to be so cold. It's not even going to... There's going to be zero chance for it to melt. It's supposed to be single-digit highs like three days in a row for me. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Overnight lows in the negatives. It's going to be frigid. We're supposed to get three to five inches of snow on uh, Friday into Saturday, and I think like one to three Thursday night into Friday. So we get snowed in this weekend. My sister's got to work this weekend too, so I don't know how she's going to get in. She works at the hospital, so she can't really fall off. And because it's a holiday, she's required to work too, so. Yeah, that's going to be tough. Only three one thousandths of a second off that last lap versus the quickest lap of the race already. Harvick clearly the fastest car on the racetrack. AI very slow at Sonoma. It's really only in the chute. They're pretty competitive everywhere else. And I had a feeling that that was going to potentially be an issue, even though I haven't ran Sonoma since the update until today. Just because knowing this game and knowing that it's the same track except for that one part. And of course, the AI are slow there as a result. Chance to go for win number seven for Kevin Harvick. Got to get these wins and pad that regular season points lead because you just don't know what's going to happen. We still have ten races to go. So even though he's got a 50-point lead coming into tonight, that is not a lot. I mean, all it takes is two finishes outside the top 20, and Truex is right there. Or Byron, for that matter, because Byron was only 55 back, and he's in second. Harvick might not even increase the points lead too much over Byron today. They get just over one race worth of points, assuming Harvick can sweep the stages and win the race. I've been stuck at eight different winners here for a little bit now. For about four races we have been. I'm sure we'll get more new winners. Got a couple more super speedways left in the regular season. We'll go back to Atlanta and then Daytona for the regular season finale. How about Reese Hesman's in fourth right now? Could he pull off an upset to get into the playoffs? Now, he'd have to be in the top 30 in points. I don't think he is. But if he scores a lot of points today, maybe he'll be close. I do know of the back market cards. I think he does have a lot more points than, like, Biffle, Yaley, uh, Garrett Smithley. I know he's got more points than. Timmy Hill. So, I mean, he... I don't think he's in the top 30, but I think he's... Probably just outside of it. So if he scores a lot of points today, I mean, I could see him making up if all those guys around 30th in points like Corey LaJoy, Ty Dillon, if those guys have some off days, which they will probably have, and Hesmans can perform today. And I mean, Hesmans, it could just be today. I mean, if he just gets a lot of points, competes for a win at, say, Road America or you know, Watkins Glen, Indy, again, he's got a lot of chances, even a super speedway. That'd be... It'd be something if he can get into the playoffs for a team that didn't even run full-time in real life in the NASCAR Cup Series in 2022. Yeah, I don't know what the wind chill is supposed to be. Now, I would imagine the wind chill is going to be about like that because I know we're supposed to have like 30 mile an hour winds on top of the temperature being single digit high. So, yeah, it's going to be, uh, well, I mean, you guys will know. Not necessarily on Sunday, but I'll be streaming Friday and Saturday. You guys will know how cold it is here, because I'll tell you. Do the stream with my window open, just <laughs> just make it harder on myself mentally. I don't think the people in my household will appreciate appreciate that. Why is it so cold in here? May or may not have the window open while it's negative temperatures outside. <laughs> I 
I didn't see that game. I didn't watch it at all, but I heard about the snowball situation in that game. It was flooring during the Packers game last night, too. 15 degrees. In the second half, it was flooring. Harvick will have to get into lap traffic at some point in time in this stage. Honestly, I think I stay out during the stage break. I think I will. I don't think I'm going to pit during the stage break. I just don't trust myself back in traffic. I don't want to get into an accident and wreck myself out of a shot to win. I'm not going to pull a Daniel Suarez at Coda is essentially what I'm saying here. We're going to stay out. We're going to get the stage points. And then we're going to stay out during the stage break as well. So we'll definitely be able to make it on field. We only have 11 to go in stage one already. Last night, though, the cars got a lot of grip. From a car stability standpoint, it feels good. Rare that I have that in one race, let alone two races in a row. Something's off here. Still only about three tenths of a second off the fastest lap. Ran about 10 green flag laps so far. I noticed the tires don't wear out during caution, but the fuel goes way down under caution. It's also going to be interesting if we get any cautions close to the fuel window if the AI potentially pit. I'm committed to pitting under green as of right now, at least early in stage 2. If I pit, I know I'm going to win the next stage on speed. I just don't know if I'm going to actually get through traffic cleanly, though. I just don't trust myself. Especially when they check up in the chute as bad as they do. And if I have fresh tires on top of it, it's only going to amplify that more. So I think it's better to just play it safe and keep the track position. Got to be smart with this game. You know it's tactics. Now that we've done about 15, 16 races, we, we're, we're slowly starting to really figure it out here in a portion of the season. You're wondering why there's smoke coming out of the rear of the race car. It's not the tires necessarily burning off. It's just because there are areas on this track where you're under 100 miles an hour. That glitch is still uh, here. It's not been patched up at all yet. So it's not the engine overheating or anything either. This is a game glitch. Speaking of Garrett Smith a little bit ago, I just saw he's in 11th. And the 15 car. And you'd have to wonder with some of these guys further up towards the front of the field that aren't typically running there, you'd have to think that there's some good guys at the back of the pack. And I think you see that right there, like Bubba Wallace in 38. Greg Bimple had a 12th place finish on speed at Gateway yesterday, kind of the biggest underdog in that one. Cody Ware just a couple races ago had a third place finish at Kansas. That was on speed as well. We've seen some underdog drivers performing from time to time. Maurice Hesmans is 
seemingly going to be that driver today from what it looks in the early going. We have no clue exactly how his picker is going to do. He could lose spots there, but he's got the speed in his race car to get a good finish. He's got to maintain track position. Yeah, at least we have a fuel gauge in this. I won't have to worry about running out of fuel anymore. Unless we really have to push it to the end, but... I'm going to try not to put myself in that situation as much as I can, because I still don't trust the game. I don't think I'll ever fully trust it. That last lap, by the way, Harden picked up about a tenth from what he was consistently running about a minute 15.8. Uh, Dropped it down to 115.7 that last lap. A little bit. He's going to go wide in the carousel. Bit of a mishap there for Kevin Harvick as he gets back up onto the racetrack. He's got a big lead though, and he did a good job not completely blowing the corner and spinning out into that tire wall up on the outside. About a third of a tank of gas left for Harvick at this point in the run. Do stop at Watkins Glen. Yeah, if we can make it 30 laps, I'd definitely do that. I think that's going to be the plan for the road courses. Because that coder I pitted during the stage breaks, and it kind of bit me in the final stage. Just because I was burning the rear tires off the car a lot. And I was pushing at times where I wouldn't have had to push to try to play catch up. I think we can get stage points and still win the race. Even though we didn't at Coda, I'm just going to have to obviously take care of my tires in the final stage a little better. But obviously, I think I'm going to have to just not pit during the stages when I win them. I can maybe get away with it in stage one and pit and still get back up here and then not pit in stage two. But if I don't pit now, then I can go further at the start of the final stage before having to pit instead of pitting like five to ten laps into it. Maybe if you go about 15 to 20 before up to pit. Especially, obviously, depending on cautions as well. We had a caution on the opening lap. So restarts might be where we're more likely to see some yellow flags for incident. Not used to really seeing yellow flags for incident on the road courses on NASCAR 21. Uh, or the 22 side of things because we didn't have... I think we only had one caution for incident at Coda plus the two stage breaks. Today we've already had one caution for incident, and it's only stage one. Five to go in stage one this time by Harvick hasn't caught any lap traffic yet. It'll be interesting if he will catch anybody before the end of the stage. I think those caution laps probably bought some time for those drivers at the very tail end of the field to be able to make it through stage one and still finish on the lead lap. That's six more laps we would have had for green flag racing that we're just not going to have. So instead of five to go right now, we'd have about 11 to go. Then i definitely say Harvick will catch somebody. Left rear tire is the tire that's burning off a little bit more on the four car. Now, when I made a green flag pit stop at Coda, though, that is where we had the issues with the rear tires burning off the car. So I'm hoping that's not a road course glitch and more of just a Coda glitch. I don't know how I'm going to fix that when we do our custom schedule season. I don't want to just score stage points and sacrifice the rest of the race. we got to find a way around that. But here at Sonoma, I think Harvick is doing a pretty good job for the most part. Kind of see the tail end of the field as he was coming up on the hairpin. Finishing end of the racetrack. Yes, I will be doing playoffs. We have eight drivers locked in right now. Still eight spots left open. 
for points. We have nine races to go in the regular season after today. So it's still possible to get 16 different winners up to this point. Kind of unlikely at this point, though, at the same time. I think there will... I'd have to think that there's probably going to be at least three or four drivers that are going to lock their way in on points. I think when we were doing NASCAR 21, we had 13 different winners in the regular season. So I could easily see that being the case again. Still a lot of good drivers that haven't won yet. I mean, heck, even Kyle Busch in third the entirety of this race so far hasn't won. He comes in last driver in on points as well. He would definitely need a win. Denny Hamlin, though, having another off performance outside the top 20 in the early going. So Bush is going to be able to gap him. He's only four points ahead of him. Almirola and Hamlin are actually tied for 17th in points. Both four behind Kyle Bush. Not sure exactly where Almirola is at right now. Again, we know Hamlin's outside the top 10. Bush is in third, looking to get it. Eight stage points here in a few laps. The only corner I'm having major troubles with at times is turn three in the carousel. Uh, actually, it'd be turn two. No, yeah, it would be. No, yeah, turn two. Turn two. I had to think about that for a second. I was like, wait, how many, how many little, like, little turns are there before you get into that heavy braking zone? I believe it's turn two. And there you see the back of the pack. It is going to be close. At stage one at Gateway yesterday, we only had four drivers finish a lap down at the end of stage one. It might be similar to that here today at Sonoma as well. Only the last few cars are going to go a lap down. Two to go this time by. That means pit road will be closed. Got a quarter take of gas left for Harvick at this point. In the run. I mean, it's possible that the field pits during the stage break. That would stink if they did because... Harvick's going to be guaranteed staying out. I got to do something different than what I did at Coda because that didn't work. I know it's a different track, but I just don't think it's going to work again. And I want to get stage points, too. I want to find a way to get stage points in and win. No tourists, thanks for tuning in. He's going to be shouting out our classic duo for Dale series until the end of time. One more lap for Harvick to catch the rear of the field here. And Ty Dillon is in last place in the 42. He's got to hang on for one more lap. Restart stage two on the lead lap. There's no free pass in this game either. So it's going to be very tough for him to get back on the lead lap the rest of the way. Well, they're probably going to close in the shoot quite a bit here. as much as I thought he was going to. Into the S's. Ty Dillon and Greg Biffler, those two drivers at the very tail end of the field right now, trying to hold off Kevin Harvick to remain on the lead lap to the end of stage number one. Into turn 10. Harvick slipped up a bit. Ty Dillon slides the rear tires getting in as he cooks it pretty deep into the corner. Kevin Harvick right behind him. Oh, Dillon put it in the wall. That's going to cost him. 
He's going to go lap down right at the end of the stage as it come to the start-finish line. Kevin Harvick going to win stage one at Sonoma. Uh, he had it, too, until he, he cooked it deep going in. I think that caused him to go wide off the exit of the corner as he scraped the wall. And then just killed his momentum on the main straightaway as Kevin Harvick comes by to win the stage. William Byron will finish in second. Kyle Busch third. Larry's Hesman's fourth. Chris Rebell, who spun on lap one, still ends up fifth. Hart Church Jr. sixth. Brad Keselowski seventh. AJ Allmendinger in eighth. Alex Bowman ninth. And Justin Haley going to round out the top ten in stage one tonight in Lion Country. I have to take a screenshot here. Get on with stage two. We'll stay out during, or uh, yeah, we'll stay out during the stage break. So we are not pitting during the stage, and we will see if anybody else pitted. Green flag is going to be in the air. Byron gets that launch off that outside lane, and Kevin Harvick going to have to drop in line behind him. Same thing that happened at the start of the race. We had a caution behind ourselves earlier. It looks like the field is going to get through the carousel this time. Everybody going to be on equal tires. You would have to imagine Harvick's got to run into turn five. Byron trying to hang on off the curb. He spins the rear wheels just a bit, and Harvick going to have the lead into seven. So Kevin Harvick has led every green flag lap of the race, but Byron, remember, led the first six laps under caution. Got 30 laps in stage two. We know these guys could go 25 laps up fuel at least. So, I mean, ideally, as long as we make it three laps into the stage, we'll be able to make it on fuel without having to pit again. Uh, so it is probably better we stayed out, because if I pitted during the stage break, I was probably going to have to pit anyway, and I would have lost track position. So I think we're better off in this situation. Staying out. Everybody's going to have to pit in stage two because everybody stayed out during the stage break. You can tell everybody stayed out because Kevin Harvick isn't getting molly whopped by the field right now. Earl Arnold Jr., welcome into the stream, by the way, as well. That was the 10th stage win of the season for Kevin Harvick. And his fourth within the last three races combined, if you include this race. Had one at Charlotte, and then two at Gateway, and one early on today at Sonoma. Maybe going to get another one today. Might get ha almost half of my stage points on the season within these last three races. Average finish of 10.4 coming into the race today as he leads in the standings, trying to go for a second championship. One that he probably should have gotten back in 2020. And redemptify himself in this 2022 season. Oh, big slide getting in. Harvick able to catch it. That was the first time he about spun out today. Tires are definitely getting old. We just gotta hope we actually stay green through green flag pit stops. That's the only other thing that scares me. Kosh comes out while we're on pit road and that ends up trapping us a lap down potentially.
Marvin could have stayed out this time by as well. Got some cars on pit road already. Quite a few cars actually on pit road right now. Kevin Harvick's still on the track. We have some cars coming out of the pits around him as he blows by the 23 of Bubba Wallace. Harvick will pit this time by. He doesn't want to risk running out of gas. He'll be able to make it to the end of the stage. As should everybody. Now it's up to his pit crew to try to keep him in the lead. Lap time has fallen off about a second and a half from his fastest lap of the race. But almost 30 lap old tires. Harvick will be coming in this time. Not sure what the pit road speed limit is, but Harvick is in. Speed limit's 40. It's down to 25. I knew it wasn't that slow. I didn't know if it was 35 or 45. It ended up being 40, so... No adjustments, four tires of fuel for Harvick. Okay, Said they didn't add Hamlin's playoff car. I think these are the only three paint schemes still for Harvick, so that's probably why I didn't realize they added some extra paint schemes. How about Messi now? Oh, oh, there goes Brad Keselowski to the lead. He was in the top 10 at the end of stage one, but following green flag pit stops, it looks like the six is going to be out in front for the first time today, and Kevin Harvick will cycle out in second. Harvick and Keselowski both had good runs at Sonoma in real life earlier this season. Harvick on fresh tires. About a lap or two fresher than the six. I think overall, obviously, he's got the fastest car in the field, so should be able to hold on. This car's starting to slip and slide around a little bit, and it's almost feeling like it did at Coda after I pitted under green there. I think there's a glitch in this game where if you make a green flag pit stop on a road course, you just lose your rear tires the rest of the race. Because Harvick is having an extremely tough time right now trying to get rear grip coming out of the pits. Oh my gosh, yeah, th this car is junk now. You've got to be kidding me. There's no way around it. <laughs> I, I, I'll i tell you, it's never easy with this game. Here comes Kyle Busch. Harvick into the back of him. Rear tires are absolutely gone on this four car. I mean, I couldn't even get the car to hit. We were in. <laughs> How does it do that? I mean, it just 
did not want to turn. Almendinger to third, Harvick back to fourth. This is unbelievable. Hey, this game has screwed me over on road course again. There, yeah, there's just a glitch where you pit under green flag in this game on a road course and you lose your rear tires. There's no hope. I'm doing everything I can to kind of ease back into the gas to try to save them. But the problem is, is when I'm doing that, everybody else behind me is getting back to the gas sooner. All we're doing is really holding them up. Echo Force Racing, thanks for tuning in. I mean, it. this car has gone from perfect to junk immediately. I didn't make any adjustment changes on pit road either, so... Yeah, it's a it's a glitch with this game. I was I was scared it was gonna be at every road course. At first when it happened at Coda, I thought maybe it was just a Coda glitch, but this is the only the second road course I've ran on the NASCAR twenty two side of thing. It it's doing the same thing. It has no bite. In turn eleven, the only thing we can do is just try to hang on for fourth to the end of the stage. We pit during the stage break and Try to make an adjustment. I don't know that that's going to help. I tried making an adjustment at Coda. It pitting there and it just, it didn't matter. I don't even know that the rear tires are going to make it all the way to the end of the run anyway. We still have 23 laps to go yet in stage two. Man, big loss of grip there. I don't know that I'm going to make it without spinning out the rest of this stage. Thing is a handful right now. Alex Bowman up over the curb. Trying to get by Kevin Harvick. Can't quite do it. Harvick really holding these guys up. I mean, he needs to to try to maintain track position. Knowing we're going to get at least one more restart yet. Bowman going wide into the sand that time. Lost a couple spots. Josh Balicki up to fifth. Good run for the 77 for Spire Motorsports. Look at the lap time by Kevin Harvick. His last lap was a 122.8. My fastest lap was a 115.5. We are nine seconds. Nine, yeah, nine seconds slower a lap. That is ridiculous. I was scared of this. That was the only reason I wanted to pit during the stage break. But even if I did, we were going to have to make a green flag stop at some point in time in the race today. In the final stage. Unless we ended up getting a caution. So the, the hope is, is that maybe if we pit during the stage break, it won't be like this anymore. That's what I'm really hoping for. But then it's going to be like this eventually in the final stage anyway. I have ran six laps on these tires. And the left rear is almost halfway like to being non-existent anymore. I cannot believe this. Well, I know when we go to other road courses not to pit under green as much as I can help it. I hate to put myself back in traffic, but the only shot I've got. So gonna have to prepare to pit before the end of the stage yet. You're Kevin Harvick. I'm going to try to put more wedge into it. Try to put two whole rounds in, but I don't even know that that's going to work. It's 
20 to go yet in the stage this time by but it is absolutely ridiculous how much slower this car is eight to nine seconds a lap slower than what it was Blicky in there goes Harvick wide off into the sand Losing a bunch of spots, completely chopped off Ricky Stenhouse. Gets back around Larice Hesmans. Right behind Alex Bowman, so Harvick's in seventh, losing three spots total that last lap. Spinning out of Coda, kept wanting to spin out. Yeah, it's just, it's a glitch with the road courses on this game. Echo Force Racing. No gamer. Dad, thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm not a Harvick fan, but we're racing as Harvick for this season because we had some polls in the chat for who everybody on the channel fan wise wanted me to race as, and Kevin Harvick won the fan vote, so. And every driver had a possibility at a vote as well. Harvick won it. Harvick trying to protect Hesman's on the outside. Not going to be able to get by the four. I have a bad feeling Kevin Harvick's going to finish a lap down before the end of the stage. There's no way he's going to make it to the end of the stage. But he has to go as far as he can to make sure he's going to make it on just another stop. I mean, we might have to pit three times in the stage. Hopefully the wedge adjustment helps. But if not... This car is going to be broken the rest of the race. Hesmans goes wide, by the way. Merges back in line behind Stenhouse and in front of Austin Dillon. Bill Campbell, thanks for tuning in. I mean, this, yeah, this car is just, it's not what it was. Harvick won stage one. Doesn't matter anymore. Stenhouse just slipped by him. Putting Harvick back to 8th place again. I'll tell you what though. When we go to the Roval in the round of 12, if they don't fix this, I think we're going to get eliminated from the playoffs in that round. Unless I have a huge points cushion. Which is possible because I do have six wins, but... We got 30... We got 40 playoff points right now because we did win stage one today. But if I don't have a good race at Talladega or win... The first race of the round at Texas. No clue how Texas is going to be in this game until we get there. Contact Harvick almost spun off of it. And Larice Hesman's got around him. Harvick still in the top 10. Austin Dillon taking a peek to the inside into turn 10. It's around the four of Harvick. Harvick sliding wide. Cole Custer looking to his inside. Oh, so is Chastain. Chastain just squeezed the four. Right into the 41. Thought he was going to send him into the tire barrels at the front of pit row. Luckily, Harvick was able to get his car to turn back to the bottom. Custer ended up in the wall after contact from the four. Got ricocheted off Chastain.
Wait, Slinsky, thanks for tuning in. So Brad Keselowski is leading right now, trying to get his first win. He's well below the cutoff line on points. That would knock Kyle Busch below the top 16 in the point standings, but then again, Busch is in second. Very good chance we're going to get a new winner in this race. The way things are looking right now, Custer did not take off well there. and Harvick got into him. Oh, man, I think Chastain clipped the tire wall. Oh, my gosh, Suarez about flipped. I was looking out of the rear view. Look at that Suarez. I missed the S's. Plowing everywhere. Everybody's missing everything. Suarez to the outside. Harvick slides. Maybe I could force one of these guys into a potential caution. I'm not going to intentionally wreck them necessarily, but if I could force them wide. And we get a caution that way. Then we could pit under the yellow. Maybe the car will be fixed. Because otherwise, we're going to end up a lap down at the end of the stage, and it wouldn't even matter if the car's fixed. I'm not going to make up a full lap. Got to figure something out. There goes Suarez. Gets around Harvick. Harvick trying to get back around the 99. Can't quite get to him there. Harvick going to stay out of the pits this time. Bye. He will have to pit the following time, though. Ross Chastain's the next one behind him. Harvick back in 12th. Oh, Chastain into the bear. I was looking at Chastain. And Harvick just spun, and now his left front tire's down. I was looking at Chastain. How did he hit the tires and just drive off like that? Unless he missed it. Could have swore he hit it. Left front tire is down on the four of Kevin Harvick. He's got to go the full length of the track. He's going to have to pit this next lap anyway. There's the Burtons going wide off into the sand. This race has got ugly quick. I told you guys it was too good to be true. I just knew it. I knew something was going to happen. Out of my control, and sure enough, it did. I'm surprised I'm able to turn the car as well as I have been, considering the left front tire is literally, I mean, it's there, but it's flat. It's just a rim now. Oh, got a ramp going there. I'm just trying to make it into the pits at this point. Oh, wait. Hang on, Briscoe's around. Will we get a caution? Harvick's staying out of the pits right now, hoping for a yellow, but I don't think we're going to get one. Oh, no. Briscoe spun, but there was no caution flag, so we stay green, and Harvick's got to go another lap. Well, crap. <laughs> And by the way, my left rear is not there anymore either. I think both the left side tires are flat. This is ridiculous. Oh, Logano's going to spin now. Will that be a caution? He goes off into the sand after clipping the curb. Okay, now the left... Okay, so now the left rear blue. So now both left side tires are gone on the four. 
Eric Jones off the curb. Harvick can't even get his car to turn anymore. Yep. I... All these spins happening and no cautions. Kyle Busch is already a lap down, by the way. And now we might get stuck in the grass. This is a train wreck right now. Come on, keep it rolling. Keep it rolling, keep it rolling, keep it rolling. Oh, Den House, hello. Oh, man. Well, our regular season points lead got to be pretty much gone. We'll still be in the lead, considering we won the stage and we had a 50-point cushion coming in, but all that hard work at Gateway last night, looks like it's all going to be for naught based off today. Harvick finally got to make it into the pits. It's going to be a two- round of wedge going into the car for the adjustment. Santiago Kid, Elijah Buddy Jenkins, thanks for tuning in. What a train wreck for Harvick after dominating winning stage one and now with 14 to go at stage two having to pit. He's got two flat tires. Um, left rear blue just because of how the rear tires are burning off the car. He went 14 laps before that left rear blue because of how much he was abusing it on this next run. It wasn't even like it was my choice either. There's a glitch where you make green flag stops under this game and your car doesn't handle the same. It just slides around a lot. And there's no way to not slide. I was doing everything I can to like ease back into the gas so quiet, so like slightly, it didn't matter. So Harvick is two laps down. Um, well, maybe he's only one down. He's one down, but Brad Keselowski's the leader, and Keselowski's not that far behind him. Hopefully, the wedge adjustment is going to help Harvick here. We'll find out if it will or not. As we get into this run, and hopefully the wedge adjustment is going to help Harvick not be majorly loose. He needs to stay in front of Keselowski and stay one lap down to the end of the stage no matter what here. Nope, the car's still sliding. It doesn't matter if you put Wedge into the car. It's still going to do that. It literally doesn't matter. It's ridiculous. Hate this game so much. I'm not going to say you can't have a perfect race because Gateway was pretty fun last night. And Auto Club was pretty fun. Every other track, that's so fun. We went from the fastest car to the slowest car. Just because we made a green flag stop. And we had a glitch. Out on the road courses on this game, you make a green flag stop and you lose all rear grip. Even if you don't make any adjustments. Because I didn't make any adjustments during the first stage. And then I did make an adjustment to try to counteract it the second time. And that didn't matter. Keselowski's going to put Kevin Harvick two laps down. Harvick's got to push. It's not going to matter, though. He just doesn't have rear grip. It's going to be two laps down. Are you kidding me right now? What is this? We got cars backing up. 
still no caution. I think the wedge made it worse. <laughs> The only other thing we can do, we're gonna pit during the stage. We're gonna ride this out at least to the end of stage two. Then we're gonna pit and just hope the car is gonna be fixed again once we pit. We are two laps down, so we only have this time by about eight laps to go in the stage. We're not gonna lose another lap. But even still, if we don't get any cautions for incident, then we won't be able to pit for fuel or tires. It just sucks that I didn't even, it wasn't like I spun out and caused this to happen. I literally just made a green flag pit stop. So going forward on the road courses, knowing that this is gonna happen, we're gonna have to run out the first two stages and not pit we're gonna have to pit during the stage break so this glitch doesn't happen until we get to the final stage and have to make a green flag stop in the final stage there will be a chance we could steal a win if cautions could play out perfectly to the point where we wouldn't have to make a green flag stop but we didn't have that at Coda, and we haven't had that today at Sonoma. Stenhouse trying to cause a caution right now as he gets into the back of Harvick. Full repair is not going to matter. It's just going to cost me more time when I pit. I don't really think the damage actually slows me down too much in this game. It's just the car, the rear tires are gone. Well before the damage. It was like this. It was like this as soon as we made that green flag stop. And we've seen a few cars spin and no cautions have come out. Including Harvick. Harvick spun twice. In this stage. Because of how much of a lack of rear grip there is. But yeah, we're just going to have to try to win the first two stages. We knew that from that we can make it into the final stage. I know Watkins Glen, that's only 90 laps. And even like Road America, for instance. Oh my gosh, Denhouse. He's going to lose it. Please be a caution. Stenhouse is parked right now in turn two after spinning and coming back across the track. We are still green. And I don't think we're going to get a caution for it. How did we get a caution when Christopher Bell spun on the first lap? But well, we didn't get a caution the rest of the race after that. All these spins we've seen. We've had five spins in stage two, but no caution. They've all been on the trip. Well, Logano's wasn't. He kind of spun off into the sand. But then the other four, they were on the track. So I don't know why the bell caution came out. We haven't seen any others. Now, if the field does not pit during the stage break, Kevin Harvick pits during the stage break. He can make up one lap. that way but then after he makes up that one lap he's still going to need a caution at some point in time in the stage if he's going to be able to make it so yeah 
I, I, I don't know. It's just... We could ride it out for a little bit, but if the car gets to this point again... If it's still like this when I pit during stage... Uh, yeah, at the start of stage three, then we're just gonna end it. I'm not I'm not driving around this slow the rest of the race. I just feel like once it's like this, it's not fixable. Like even if I pit under green. I'm gonna put the setup back to the way it was at the start of the race. I just saw one car pit. Oh Hesman. Yeah, see Hesman's hit the front of the the barrels towards pit row. Now we spun again. That's the third time we've spun. We push into the wall in turn one. Four more laps this time by. What a crappy game. Bob says I. This curb's definitely throwing the cars around quite a bit. The fact that we actually have 15 lap pressure tires too, we're still having this happen. We have quite a few cars pitting before the end of the stage though. How is it that they can hit the tire barrier at the front of pit road and they just bounce off of it? BJ McLeod just hit it too. We still got more cars in the pits. Well, those guys are probably not going to pit towards the beginning of the next stage then. So note to self, any cautions we get, pit. Well, unless it's in the first two stages, because I can just run those outright and win them. Assuming I don't make any mistakes, which I didn't at Coda and I didn't here. So, just going to, I mean, it's going to be a straightforward strategy and the road course is going forward. We're just going to have to hope that we get a caution somehow in the middle of the run. Or... And we could somehow make up a lap on the field. Which Road America is probably not going to be possible. Watkins Glen. And Indy maybe. It's a sliver of a chance at least. And somehow every lead lap car pits before the end of the stage. Kevin Harvick could actually make up a lap this way. Rather than at the beginning of the next stage. Then he could pit during the stage break, and who knows? I mean, he'd still be one lap down, but... Unless he's so far behind Keselowski that he's not going to cycle in front of him, which is possible. Bell's in front of him in 10th. So I don't know. No, my tires are not okay. I'm about to blow my left rear again. Are you kidding me? How? We ran nine laps. And my left rear tire is about to blow out again. They're, it's like the rear wheels just, they don't grip, like, at all. They're just constantly spinning. 
no matter whether you hit the brakes or the gas, like they just spin. It's like driving on ice. Bowman into the wall there. Harvick's got to keep these cars behind him. Behind him, Kyle Busch is leading. Will he stay out to the end of the stage? If he hasn't pit yet, maybe he cycled to the lead. We're going to have to make it. We're going to have to stay out, even if that left rear tire blows before the end of the stage so we don't lose another lap. I might be two down anyway to the end of the stage, but I don't want to go three down. Just in case the car goes back to normal when I pit during the stage break, which is not impossible. If he is two laps down, then Harvick will only have to go one more lap on these tires. That's all we need is one more lap out of the left rear. But if he's one lap down, we're going to need two laps out of the left rear, and I don't think it's going to make it two more laps. I'd be lucky if I made it one. Shout out to Josh Balicki in the top five. I want a weird winner in this one. That, that'd be uh, something. I mean, Brad Keselowski was leading earlier. He did not win in real life in 2022. Points race. If this is the final lap of the stage, once the top 10 cross the start finish line, the stage will come to an end. Now, seventh place is the next car behind him. So Harvick will have to get back to the start-finish line here. Really trying to nurse it. Well, I mean, I'm not even really nursing it. The car's just naturally this slidey and slow. Yeah, so Harvick is still going to be two down. So Kevin Harvick is two laps down at the end of stage two after winning stage one. And he was leading at lap four before he pitted. So, I mean, literally in the last 27 laps of the stage, he ends up going from first to last. And your stage two winner is going to be Brad Keselowski. And I believe that is going to be his first stage win of the season. Uh, let me check just to make sure. So for Brad, yep, stage win number one on the year then for Brad Keselowski. First playoff point. And we'll see if he can actually capitalize with a win in this one now that Kevin Harvick likely doesn't have a chance to win the race. The door is open for somebody new to get a win today. Kevin Harvick going to pit during the stage break. We're not going to make any adjustments. We're going to take four tires and fuel, and we'll see if the car is still going to handle as bad as it was. And if it does, then we're just going to call it quits, because <laughs> I am not driving that for the last 55 laps. Pitting twice as much as everybody else. Left rear did make it to the end of the stage. In fact, it only went 10 laps in. All right, well, final stage underway. Harvick, two laps down. Green flag back in the air. Is this car back to normal is the next question. How much stacking up are we going to see? Legato's going to get turned in turn one. That is, oh my gosh, why is this happening? Some major stoppages going on. Hard to tell if the car is actually still slipping or sliding or not. I don't know. Oh, Larson pulling out a line to block. 
15. It makes contact look like with Byron. The 15 block and the 4. Harvick to 37th, by the way. There are a couple other cars two laps down other than just him. I think the car is fixed. We'll know by lap time once we get into the open, but I think the car's fixed. So the car's fine if you pit under caution. Or at least during the stage breaks. Just wish that there was something we could do for green flag stops to have that not happen. We only have to make one more stop the rest of this race. The rest of the field may have to pit twice considering most of them pitted right before the end of the stage. trying to salvage as many points as he possibly can. Yeah, if you pit under caution, you're fine. Won't have to worry about any glitches. Trying to get by Harrison Burton. I don't want to intentionally bring out a wreck, but at the same time, knowing that there's a... Well, the problem is, is we've seen spins, and the caution hasn't come out, though. Only one time we've actually had a spin where a caution came out as a result. That was from Christopher Bell. Back there with Bubba Wallace. Harvick gets around him. by Biffle. Yeah, I mean, look at the lap times and how much better they are. 116.8. The car's got grip again. Like, you just can't pit under green. You pit under green, the car slides around. You pit under caution, the car, it acts normal. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Contact with Austin Cindric there. Harvick just desperately trying to make passes for position right now. Use Ricky Stenhouse up. Tries to make a pass on the 47. Couldn't get around him. with the deep dive underneath Stenhouse. Stenhouse into the walls. He couldn't hold the outside through the hairpin. Uh, Hesman still in the top 10. He is in 10th place. Off 
it gets by Hesmans. Trying to outbreak. Suarez barely did. Gets into Austin Dillon. Make contact with the three. Harvick to the outside of the three car. Oh boy, big contact there. Austin somehow didn't get turned. I have no clue how he didn't spin out. The way he about got hooked going into the corner. Slipped around a bit. Kept enough control. Well, Custer's up to seven. Off the restart to start this stage. Don't like me doing a road course. <laughs> I mean, there's no fantasy tracks in this game. But the custom schedule season, I didn't want to have every track in it. Still, so. We'll do what we can. Side by side into the S's right now between Almendinger and Harvick. And Harvick able to hang on. Almendinger's off into the grass. Came right back up in front of Cole Custer to hold on to position. Harvick clipped the grass right there. Yeah, because the schedule still has a full Daytona 500. Alex Bowman looking for back-to-back -to -back top fives. Finished second at Gateway yesterday, running in fourth early in the final stage today. We'll Clarence here side by side into the S's again. Dangerous area of the track to do that, but Harvick is going to get by Balicki. Balicki going wide, taking out a few cones. Well, I mean, the Daytona 500, it was the first race for all except for uh, one of my custom schedule seasons. I did Dodge Raceway first on, uh, I think it was NASCAR 05, that custom schedule. Slowski in second. I think Kyle Bush got around him on the restart to take the lead. Bush looking for his first win of the year. And that is the case. Bell is in third. He is the only driver in the top five with a win. Harvey got into the back of Bowman into turn 11. Harvey trying to get by the 48 still. Side by side into the carousel. Bowman slips. Harvick trying to cross him over. 
Big bounce off the curb. Bowman is going to go around. The third place car has spun. Will we get a caution? I think we'll stay green. Josh Balicki now to fourth place. First spin we saw in the final stage so far. Her really threw Harvick that time. Bush is widening out a pretty decent sized gap over Keselowski. Brad's crew is pretty fast though with their pit stops. That's what cycled them out into the lead and ended up winning stage two because of it. If we did get a caution though, Harvick would definitely want to get his lap back. One of them, at least. You know, I wonder, because the... I'm thinking maybe if I take left sides only. Well, the, le the left sides is the one that's burning out. Maybe if I take right sides only, I'll be alright. Or no tires. Maybe the car will still handle okay. So I can go a full fuel run and it's fine. Fine enough. It, what, it, full fuel run is still better than what it was. Trying to keep up with Christopher Bell. Got through turn one really well. Into the carousel. Put a lot of pressure on the 20. Bell fourth of points coming in. Won the Coke 600 two days ago. Contact. Gonna push the 20 car a little bit further out in front of the four. Harvick definitely being held up right now. Got to make a charge into turn 11. Might have been a little bit too far back. He didn't get off turn 10 very well. Harvick just can't get by Christopher Bell. Pushing extremely hard into the carousel. Got it to stick. Pulls the gap back just a bit. And now he'll get around him on the outside in the chute. And that is not a pass for position. Twelve laps into stage three so far.
Keselowski kind of wish really pulled away from the 20 while Bell was battling with Harvick for a few laps. Ever since I was in the 17s when I was behind Bell, once I got the clean air again, I dropped it down to 16.5 that last lap. I think into the shoot the next lap we might have a chance at Keselowski. Another lap or two after that we'll be right at the 18 to Kyle Busch. Harvick right, definitely gonna stay out of the pits as long as possible just in case. A caution comes out, miraculously, that he can get a lap back. And then maybe the rest of the field will have to pit again the rest of the race, knowing that they're going to have to pit before him. Harvick's only going to have to pit once. So he can make up one lap that way. And he's trying to make up another lap right now. He's so close to doing it. He's got to downshift an extra time almost into the wall. Into the chute. That would have been a hard hit. Definitely would have blown another tire if he did that. Now he goes wide. Pushing a little too hard to try to catch the six. Thought that that was going to be a lap he could have gotten around him, but he just pushed a little too much. I wonder how many drivers are one lap down as well. Harvick has a run on Keselowski. Gets to his inside. He's going to have the advantage in turn seven to make the pass, and well done by Kevin Harvick. Now just trying to run down race leader Kyle Busch to get back to one lap down. After a glitch has caused Harvick to go two laps down after winning stage one in today's race. But he's going to have to make a green flag stop in this stage. And I don't think there's anything we can do to keep the car from not getting loose other than pitting under a caution. And that's if we get one. But if we do get one, he needs to get this lap back on Kyle Busch first. Man. <laughs> cut that corner, corner pretty close a couple times. That was probably the closest I cut it while still trying to not lift as much. To get as much on throttle time as possible. What was that? <laughs> Did you hear when I drove across the curb that time? It sounded like an air gun on pit road. <laughs> I've never heard that before. 
I've hit that curb so many times in this race that never sounded like an air gun until right there. That was the last thing I was expecting. I can have a loose wheel now. They take my lug nut off. Harvick gonna get the bush in the chute this time. Up off the exit of the corner to the outside of Kyle Bush side by side. Hasn't cleared the 18 yet. Kyle gonna drive it in very deep. And Harvick's gonna get him with the crossover. And beat him back to the accelerator. So Kevin Harvick just one lap down. Way better than what it was. A little less than half a tank of gas left, so he can go quite a ways on fuel yet. Yeah, someone stole the air gun was sitting in turn 8 just waiting for me to hit that curb. That was so random. Like, I've hit that, I mean, we're on lap 71 right now, and only once when I hit that curb the entire race that it sounded like an air gun when I drove across it. If only that meant it was going to fix my left rear tire wearing out when we make a green flag stop. Maybe it will. The problem is we are still going to need a caution See the tail end of the field. Actually, Chastain's in 25th, so I think he actually just pit. So the leaders are pitting. Or in the process of pitting. Less than 40 laps to go at Sonoma. Definitely have some cars on pit road. And we still have a third of a tank of gas left, so. Won't have to really worry about pitting anytime soon. Super soon. Harvick could go close to 30 laps on fuel. Only at lap 19. Still being scored in 37th. A lot of the cars that were lapped down seem to be two laps down. Might be some other cars that are one lap down. Harvick could catch for position when cycling through pit stops here. Chastain actually would be the last car in the lead lap, I do believe, in 24th. I'm not sure what position he was in before that. Big time power slide there. just coming out of the pits. He's in 24th. There's the air gun again. That was a different curb that time. I heard the air gun on the, uh, it was the right hand curb that time. The, the first time I heard it was on the left hand curb.
Did they actually fix the pace car glitch though? Or have we just not had it yet? I, I don't buy that they actually fixed it. I feel like we're going to run into that problem at some point. Harvick to 34th. He's gained a few positions, which is a few points. Better from running last where he was. Even though Chastain came out of the pits a handful of laps ago, Kevin Harvick's still running him down. Tire fall off for Harvick on a second and a half on this run. Little over a quarter tank of fuel left yet. Coming out of the pits. Oh boy, Harvick coming in hot. Suarez came out of the pits right in front of his teammate Chastain who nearly went off track. Harvick almost went off track trying to keep it off the one. Chastain loses a little bit of time to the 99 as a result. I think these two are just outside the top 10 before the pit stops. Harvick into the back of Chastain. Still trying to get by Ross. Can't do it. Big run on Chastain. And he's going to get around him on the outside. Potentially contact. It's the one force of the four wide. Good job by Harvick keeping it off the wall. to the inside of Chastain. Make sure not to make contact that time. Going to clear him, but Ross maybe going to try a crossover move. Nope, not quite. Couldn't get alongside Harvick off the exit of turn seven, so now start to pull away. That curb really launched the four car. Almost pushed him off track. Chastain's got to run towards ten. Never mind, I guess he backed off going into 10. Harvick, by the way, to 30 30. He's getting another spot. Got a few other cars on pit road. Maybe he's got another couple spots up his sleeve. I hope. Yep, 32nd, 31st. There we go. 30th? All right, we got three more. Now, if we could just get a caution. I know I can make it on fuel to the end. And everybody else is going to have to pit. Well, I, actually, I might not make it on fuel. But I think I'll make it on tires. I can go fuel only. If I pit it under a caution from right now. I think my tires can go a little over 30 laps. And honestly, considering we only have about 32 to go right now anyway, I think I may be able to push it that far on fuel. Maybe not. Probably not. Tires, I think I can, but fuel, probably not. But if I go fuel only, then I might not have to worry about the car acting as if I'm on a slip and slide.
Yeah, I I wish it was something I could do adjustment wise to not have the car burn its left rear tire off. It's just not possible. You make a green flag stop. It's just gonna do that. Unless for some reason it doesn't happen this time, but I probably guarantee it will. All the cars on pit road. Greg Biffle, Bubba Wallace. It's going to move Kevin Harvick up to 29th. As high as he has been since falling two laps down. Again, he is one lap down right now. Suarez is in seventh just in front of him. You see the sixth place car of Alex Bowman not that far up ahead also. Harvick can make it on fuel one more stop. Please just don't let the car slide around. make it a green flag stop unless we get a caution in the next lap or two Harvick not coming in this time by either Kyle Busch still the leader after green flag pit stops Bowman up to fifth now I think everybody has hit pit road I think that was the last of the cars that had to pit there Harvick to 27th be the first car one lap down but again, no free pass awarded here. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to get all I can out of this before the car really starts to slip and slide because it's going to be bad when we come out of the pits. I'm still running 116 sixes. I mean... About 1.1 seconds off our fastest lap of the race on almost 25 lap older tires, but we make a green flag stop and we're 8 to 9 seconds slower a lap. Harvick going to stay out this time, but I got another car pitting. Maybe the, some of the lap cars still have to pit yet. It's going to get Harvick up to 26 now. I think Stenhouse just pit. May have to pit this time by for Kevin Harvick. May. May not. Got nothing to lose, really. Knowing how the car could potentially act. Just get <laughs> There's the air gun again. Oh, Bowman clips the wall. Oh, he goes around. Bowman sitting in the S's. Will we get a caution after Alex Bowman has just spun? Oh, please. Gotta stay out this time. Will we get a caution? Just the second car to spin in the final stage. Bowman has spun. While in 5th place, he has dropped outside the top 5. Suarez has gotten by him. 
Bowman's still in sixth ahead of Chastain, who's in seventh. Harvick stays out one more lap. He was hoping for a caution. And he just didn't get it. That would have been perfect. It just wasn't meant to be. Try to make up as many spots as he can to the end of the race. Harvick will pit this time. Won't be able to go another lap on fuel. I think we have to be committed that we're not going to get a caution the rest of this race, no matter how many more spins we saw. We somehow got a caution on lap one when Christopher Bell spun, but we have seen a lot of other spins since and no cautions. We're gonna go one more. Screw it. Harvick gonna go another lap on fuel. Car's handling too good. <laughs> I'm just scared to pit. I'm so scared to pit. I also don't even care if I run out of fuel at this point. I'm just so scared to pit. We have to pit this time. There's no way we're going to make it another lap on fuel. Maybe we will, but it's not worth the risk anymore. Kevin Harvick will pit this time. A little bit wide there. Sometimes it just wasn't meant to be. He's out of gas. Out of gas as he's just about to roll onto pit road. Got to get down to pit road speed. But he is there. Four tires of fuel for Kevin Harvick. Oh, don't do this. We're going to run out on pit road, aren't we? Oh, it, it just it shut me off as soon as I got to pit road. We're in the pits. Any other game you get to pit road when you run out of gas and it still gets you to your pit box. This game, nope. Oh, okay. Hang on. That works. That works. We'll just project our way. <laughs> I was going to say, any other game. It just teleported us to our box. Does that... Oh, we're stuck, aren't we? Oh, no! No! Dude, why are we stuck in our pit box? You've got to be joking me. No! I can't do anything. I can't shift. I can't do anything. It just... No! All that hard work to get to a lap down. And we're stuck in our pit box. This is this is new. I have not seen this before. You've got to be joking. We are stuck in our pit box. And now we have zero shot to win this race. And we're going to end up finishing in last. Well, 39th, because there is one car out. And I thought they fixed the game. I bet. <laughs> no. They sure as hell did not. You've got to be kidding me. We are stuck in our pit box. That's how this race is going to end. After 84 freaking laps out of 110, and we've been streaming for almost two and a half hours, we're going to get stuck in our pit box on our last stop of the race. This is stupid. You've got to be joking. There it goes. I mean, we're still... I think we're still going to be in the points lead, but... Not by much anymore. 50 points no longer. What a comeback, too. I mean, I think we legitimately had a shot at a top 15. 
assuming the tires wouldn't have fallen off the car, which probably would have happened, but now we'll never know. Controller breaking moment. Yeah, I've never done that before. I'm going to keep that streak alive. I don't get that, man. I'm just doing it for the commentary side. Like, I'm not... I'm not really that mad. I just feel like making a big deal out of nothing. It's more entertaining to see me rant whether it's legitimate or not. I don't take this game to heart. Yeah, so uh, Kevin Harvey going to finish 39th. We're not going to know who won this race. Yeah, I can't do anything. I'm trying to shift and hit the throttle. I can change cameras. <laughs> That's all I can do. Oh, man. This is a tough one. This is tough. The fact that I made it into the pits when I ran out of, ran out of gas, too. And the fact that we literally put fuel in the car. Did my gas man not just put fuel in the car when we were on pit road? We have gas in it. Look, yeah, look, the fuel indicator's full. The fuel indicator's still showing that our tank's full because we just put gas in it. But no, now we're just chilling here. Pack it up, Rodney. We're going home. All the fans over there are probably like, what happened to Harvick? And I'd say, I don't know. That buffoon over there watching me behind the trailer. Staring at just gawking at me. Kevin Harvick still in the car. Hands on the wheel. He's ready to go. He's not taking his hands off the wheel until we get to the end of this race. I can't even I can't even turn the wheel. Current lap, 4 minutes and 50 seconds. <laughs> I like how it's counting my lap. Oh, jeez. Oh, pit's open? You don't say. Lap 84 of one. Man, this is almost as bad as the Coke 600 the other night. The game crashed halfway through it. We got to the very end. We were going to win if a caution didn't come out with five laps to go. And then we finished 13th because we got trapped a lap down during green flag pit stops. All we needed was Christopher Bell to pit. One more car had to cycle through pit road, and we would have been the leader. And no, a caution came out. And we ended up getting a 13th place finish out of it. That's unbelievable. And now two nights later, two days later, this happens. And we get costed out of another win. <laughs> this is just, this is ridiculous. That's two nights in the last three nights that something stupid has happened with this game that has cost us a win. Oh, man. This is going to come back to bite us. I just have that feeling. We're going to lose the regular season championship. And then when we get to the Roval, we're going to have this tire thingy happen. And we're going to end up like missing the round of eight by like a couple points. That's what's going to happen. This is all going to come back to bite me in the end. As Denny Hamlin would say, uh, it'll all work itself out in the end. This is the anti of... De well, Denny Hamlin never seems to work it out in the end. So this is basically that. All right. Well, we're going to have to quit. And then we're going to have to run a simulated race real quick so we can get the finishing results. Because I do have to do the points myself here. Uh, we will be finishing 39th. I don't know who that was that DNF'd, uh, so I'm just going to make sure I finish 39th this time around. And we're going to go on a one, uh, I guess 2% is shortest race we can do. We'll start in last. Oh boy. Kickstart my crew, thanks for tuning in. Are they holding you because they assisted you to your box? I mean, maybe. 
But why would the why would the picker still change my tires and throw fuel in the car? I mean, theoretically, that would make sense. That'd be the logical explanation for this, but this game doesn't have any logic, so. That's too good to be true. I'm Alex Hayden, Tune in, in next week when we stream NASCAR 22 to see what glitch we have next. <laughs> Didn't we have Kansas? So, four nights. We bring NASCAR 22 back for four nights in a row. Kansas, we had a caution during the National Anthem. Coca-Cola 600. We have the game crashing halfway through the race. And then tonight, we have this. We get stalled in our pit box on our last stop of the day with 26 laps to go. <laughs> like, what, what's going to happen next? Not to mention we had some air gun glitches today where we were hearing air guns at random times when we hit the curb. That was a new one. I thought the game was going to crash when that started happening, but it didn't. Now, what's going to happen next? What's our next race? I can't remember. I think we go to Nashville next. What's going to happen at Nashville? Are we going to have the pace car glitch come back again? The return of the pace car glitch? Chase Elliott on the pole here. This race is only going to be a lap or two, so this is going to randomize the finishing results that we might have had. Kyle Busch was leading the race. Uh, Brad Keselowski was in second and won stage two. And now those guys were probably not even going to win. Yeah, a little bit of an overtime restart here. Green flag back at the air. Following, I guess, what was technically our fifth caution in the race. Everybody is stopping. We totaled our car, hitting another car at less than 50 miles an hour. I'm not even going to do uh, commentary for this at this point. Just got to make sure we finish 39th here. Um, man, how slow can we go? 33 miles an hour in turn three. Jeez. It's going to be even slower up here. How, sl how slow are they going now? Actually, it was a little bit faster. The hairpin might be slower, though. How slow in the hairpin are we going to go? About the same. It's funny that we're faster in the middle of the hairpin where you're supposed to be at the slowest. We were going 50, but we're going 33 on the straightaway leading into it. Then they just accelerate. Gonna have no clue who's gonna win this race. How, how slow are they going now? How slow are they going? Oh, Biffle. Going a bit wide. Going 30. We got. I think I hit 28. I think I saw 28 miles an hour. A new record. Nashville glitch guitar. So yeah. Starts playing random country music as we're racing. Then I get copyright and the stream gets taken down. That that'd be that'd be my luck. That's what's gonna happen at Nashville next week. We got Nashville, we got Road America, we'll probably have the tire glitch again, and then we've got uh Atlanta coming up soon. New Hampshire coming up soon. I mean New Hampshire's similar to Gateway. I think we'll have a pretty good race there. You have to finish in front of Biffle. Clear, clear. Shouldn't be that hard to pass him. I don't care if I'm passing him in the grass. Clear, Still couldn't clear. pass. Oh my god! Jesus, Biffle! All clear. All clear. Well, that's one way to get around him. Oh, wait, hang on, we're not. Oh, we got a tire down. Yeah, we got a tire down. Hey, oh, wait a minute. No, we gotta beat you. No! Got a race for last year. We got a chance. Stay in it. No, oh, that didn't work. <laughs> I'll just score myself in 30 nights. Screw it. It's too good to be true. What are the odds that he... Re Dang it. I should have started turning quicker. I might have beaten him. 
I'm still scoring myself at 39th. We earned that 39th place finish. I can do what I want. Chase Elliott wins, so we do not get a different winner today. It looked like we were going to. We probably should have, but we did not get a new winner. Chase Elliott's going to win his second race of the season, his first career win at Sonoma. Austin Dillon will end up in second. William Byron, third. He's going to gain a lot of points on us. Eric Almarola, fourth. Daniel Suarez in fifth. AJ Allmendinger, sixth. Ryan Blaney, seventh. Michael McDowell, eighth. Ricky Stenhouse, Jr., ninth. And Justin Haley rounds out the top ten in the tenth place position. And you got Logano, Jones... I gotta take some screenshots here while we're doing this. Uh, Cindric Briscoe, Roman Balicki, who was in fourth, ends up finishing outside the top ten. Tough break for him. Reese Hesmans, who was in the top ten, ends up 38th. That's tough. I got biffed, yeah, yeah, I got biffed by the biff. I, I just find it funny how he hits a tire wall at full speed, spins, still passes me, and I'm the one that blew a left front tire out of it. Did I blow the left front when I hit the wall? Because he hit me on the right side of the car. How did I blow my left front? I need to go back and look at that. There is no way... I need to go back and look at that. I backed up way too far. I'm looking at it right now. I had to have hit the wall, which blew my left front. There's no way I got hit in the right side of the car. And blew the left front tire. Yeah, it was the wall. It was getting sandwiched into the wall that blew the left front. How slow did I hit the wall? I wasn't even going that fast when I hit the wall either. Uh, looking at my speedometer, I hit the wall at 56 miles an hour and blew my left front tire. Unbelievable. I, I mean, honestly, that was a fitting end to this race. Oh, Chastain ended up 35th. Christopher Bell, 32nd. Those guys were in the top 10. Truex, 29th. Bell and Truex going to lose a lot of points here. Byron's going to get back to second, and he goes from 55 points out of first to probably less than 20 out of first going into Nashville in a couple nights. Thanks for everybody watching. Hit the like button. Subscribe for more daily NASCAR content. This was interesting. Um, I did not expect a lot of what happened tonight to happen, and I definitely didn't expect the race to end the way it did. I will say... I somewhat was hesitant on whether or not we would get that glitch with the tires wanting to uh, burn off the race car, specifically the left rear, but both rear tires for the most part, but specifically the left rear uh, because we had that problem at Coda when we pitted under green, and that was the only other road course I ran on NASCAR 22. We run our second road course tonight. We were fine uh, until we pitted under green. I pitted during the stage break at the end of stage two. Car was fine again. So, note to self, for anybody out there watching, only pit during cautions and stage breaks, and you'll be fine at road courses. You won't have to deal with this glitch. But if you make a green flag pit stop or race a race long enough or without stages that you have to make a green flag pit stop, then your car is not, you're going to be literally eight to nine seconds off the pace. It's ridiculous. I went from running 115s at one point in the race to running 124s on fresh tires. I was nine seconds off the pace because my rear tires would not grip up. And I was spinning out every so often too. Like I, when I was trying to push because... Like, why am I nine seconds off the pace? But that was what I needed to do to make the lap without spinning. So, yeah, it was pretty ridiculous that that happened. Um, we're going to have to deal with that. We still have three more road courses in the regular season, which is not good because our points lead is now down to probably less than 20. We have nine races. Three of them are road courses and two of them are super speedways. The odds are not with us to win this regular season championship, which in return is going to cost us playoff points. And then when we go to the round of 12 in the playoffs, we have Talladega. And then we have, uh, so we have Talladega and then we have the Roval. And the Roval, we're going to have the same tire glitch. Texas, who knows how that's going to go. I, we have not raced at Texas. That's going to be an unknown until we race there on how the game is going to react at Texas. The mile and a halfs are tough for me on speed. That's going to, the round of 12. 
I think the round of 16, I'll be all right. We had good speed at Darlington. I ended up like 23rd, but we had good speed. I just got to not wreck the car. And even if I do, Richmond's my best track on this game. Oh, shoot. Richmond's not in the playoffs anymore. Oh, I forgot. We got to race Kansas and Bristol. Well, never mind. I guess every round of the playoffs is going to be challenging. I completely forgot Richmond. I was going to say, Richmond was got a get-out-of-jail-free card in the playoffs because that's my best track on this game. Never mind. I completely forgot Richmond's not in the playoffs. Now, that'll help us for the regular season championship because that's like the third-to-last race of the regular season. So we might be able to get some points there before Watkins Glen. No clue how Michigan's going to go. Yeah, we haven't raced there. There's a lot of unknowns. We'll want to miss it. Tune in next time. Tomorrow night, we will be racing uh, NASCAR 06. And we'll be racing at Rockingham for the Bush Series on NASCAR 06. That will start at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. See you guys tomorrow night, everybody.